This story starts with a proposal about a year ago when we were visiting one of our favorite places, Longwood Gardens in Pennsylvania. This was the first full day of a 10 day trip that we were doing with our scamp through Pennsylvania. And we figured we would start with something fun and different. So we walked around Longwood Gardens for a while and then we were just trying to waste some time until it got dark because we were waiting for the fountain show that Longwood Gardens is famous for. They have fountains that are synchronized to music. So while we were relaxing in the conifer knoll, Patrick took this opportunity to show me the ring that he purchased and asked if I wanted to get married. And of course, I said yes. such a memorable day and the best way that we could have started that 10 day trip. We spent about a year thinking about the when, where, and how of getting married. We thought about lots of different options, but we were really struggling to find something that felt like it was perfect for us. We thought about every option from having a big wedding to running away to Las Vegas, but nothing really stuck until almost exactly one year later, we found an official that did elopement ceremonies in a park in Spring Lake, New Jersey. So we went up on a Saturday to look around and see if we liked it. We found this gazebo in Potter Park and it was such an ideal setting. This big old gazebo with this beautiful blue ceiling there was plenty of space, so just in case it rained on that day, we would have lots of room for everyone to stand under the gazebo. And we both looked at each other and we knew that that was our spot. We took a walk across the street to Spring Lake and there were actually a few weddings there that day and they were taking pictures by the lake, by the bridge. There are so many great spots in this area. We walked to downtown and got some coffee and then went over to the beach. They have a boardwalk that is very quiet and doesn't have any stores or anything, so you can just walk around and enjoy yourself. We went and got our marriage license shortly after, and then everything was in motion. So don't let the weight of the world slow you down. And if you search for the meaning of life, it won't be found. So take your insecurities and leave them all behind. Let's learn to make the most of our time. We are in this camp and we are going through the packing process, but we are not getting ready for a scamp trip. I kind of wish we were, but we are doing the final pack for our honeymoon trip. Today's our last day off. We are getting married in three days, and then we're going on a road trip through New England. We're going to Massachusetts, Maine, New Hampshire, and upstate New York. So today is our last day to get everything together, and we're taking a lot of things out of the scamp. We use the scamp to store our backpacking gear. So that is what we are getting organized and putting into the Jeep today because then we have one and a half days of work before we go up to do our wedding and then we're on the road. This is the Appalachian Trail Guide that I used to decorate the scamp and I found the section that we're going to be hiking. So the Zealand Falls Hut is going to be our first night and then we're going across to the Mitzvah Springs Hut. And um, those are two of the Appalachian Mountain Club huts that are along the Appalachian Trail. So we're going to be doing this topography right here, and then we'll be going back down to Crawford Notch. 
This trip was a bit of a challenge to pack for. We travel pretty regularly, so this is something we do a lot, but since we were packing for both a wedding and a honeymoon camping trip and we weren't going to bring the scamp, we had a lot of things to think about. When we take the scamp, everything is in one neat container and everything is kind of where it's supposed to be, but when we do a regular camping trip, there's a lot more to think about. Got most of the camping gear in there, and then here's our big new item, our cooler. We've never used a cooler before, but since we're not taking the scamp on this one, we decided to try using a cooler so we can bring more fresh stuff with us. Hopefully that uh, makes the process of cooking a little bit easier. This is the itinerary for our wedding and honeymoon trip. We threw this together rather last minute. We decided about three weeks ahead. We picked our date that we were going to get married because we decided that a big wedding was just not for us. Elopement was definitely um, more of our style. So we decided to get married at a very cute town called Spring Lake in central New Jersey at this gazebo in the park. From there, we're going to do our longest driving day up to Salem, Massachusetts. We're going to be staying at a park right outside of Salem, about eight minutes outside of Salem, and it's right on the water so we can walk down to the beach from our site. And then we're going to head up and around to Sabago Lake, which is a very large lake in the southern part of Maine. And this was the main, main thing that we wanted to do on this trip. Neither Pat or myself has been to Maine before, so we wanted to put that in. Then New Hampshire is going to be the middle part of our trip. We're going to be hiking, or rather backpacking, to two different Appalachian Mountain Club huts. Originally, before we knew we were getting married this week, I had booked a six-night backpacking trip through the White Mountains on the Appalachian Trail, and we were going to be staying at Appalachian Mountain Club Huts. When we decided a few weeks ago that we were going to make this our wedding trip, I trimmed off the edges and just stuck with the middle two, so we're going to go to Zealand Falls and Mitzvah Springs. After we leave there and we come out of the backcountry, we're going to spend one night at a resort in New Hampshire to recuperate. Then we're driving down to Woodstock, New York, and we're going to camp in Woodstock for two nights before heading back down to South Jersey. So that is the itinerary. Oh, Red, you're killing me. <laughs> Uh, we're going to have to make the next trip a dog-friendly trip. Good boy. Alright, we are almost packed and ready to go. We're getting there. Pat's going to take Red and drop him off at his parents' house. So he's going to have a good, fun time doing a doggy vacation. And then we're going to be on our way. If we can get him out of the Jeep. That's going to be the hard part. Uh, right? Mm -hmm. Don't forget the flowers. Thank you. I think we did pretty good packing. Yeah. Quite a long trip. You can still see out the windows. I remember some trips as a kid where the car was just so full you couldn't even see out. So I think we did all right. Even considering that the cooler takes up a good amount of space, but lets us bring more food. The, uh, sleeping bags. Oh yeah, the sleeping bags are taking up a lot of room. So. Okay. Once we had all of the wedding stuff and all of the camping stuff packed into the car, we started the drive up to Spring Lake. And right as you come into Spring Lake, you're actually going to pass the park with the gazebo. That's where we're getting married the following day. And Spring Lake overall is a very interesting shore town. We had never been here before coming up to find that gazebo. And it's interesting that this town doesn't have a commercial boardwalk. There's no Ferris wheel. There's no amusement rides. It's very residential. There are these big, beautiful houses all throughout Spring Lake, 
and there are a lot of historic homes. There are no big hotels. It's all small bed and breakfasts, very boutique style accommodations, and a lot of historic buildings. They do have a small downtown with some restaurants and a coffee shop, but that is on the other side of the lake. So as far as shore towns go, this is a pretty quiet one. We decided to stay at the historic Hewitt Wellington Hotel. It's located on the main road as you enter Spring Lake, directly across from the lake, and it is an old Victorian mansion. There are lots of rooms, there's a big wraparound deck with rocking chairs that you can sit on, and it just has so much character. We thought that this would be a perfect spot to stay for the wedding and for us to get ready ahead of time. Yeah, we're up. Wait. Mm hmm She said there's a sign. Yeah. Because this is a historic mansion, there are lots of stairs and no elevator. Our room was all the way up on the third floor. It is up. Wow. We're like at the top. <laughs> I'll let you figure out the lock. Yeah. His directions. We were told that the historic locks come with some challenges to figure them out. We booked a suite that has more square footage than our house so that we would have room to get ready the next day. It's like a sitting room. Yeah. That's really it's neat. It yeah. It's like two rooms. Well, parents could come out and hang out in here. I know. Very neat. Very big, very neat. Do we have a view? Can we see anything? Um, oh, the lake. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Since our normal style of travel usually involves camping, this was pretty luxurious accommodation. This is a lot of space. Definitely a nice treat for our wedding preparations. But now we had to navigate those three flights of never ending stairs to bring all of our wedding stuff and all the things that we needed for that night up into our room. But we also wanted to take a walk around the historic hotel because the Hewitt Wellington has all different rooms. Each one has a different theme, a different style to it. This is the sitting room down in the common area at the back of the hotel. And then this is the breezeway where they have breakfast in the morning. Yep. And if you continue through the breezeway, you can go out and see the pool. Unfortunately, we were so busy, we did not get to take advantage of the pool, but it looked really nice. A nice porch. We got everything into the room. We're gonna go walk over and see my parents. Mm -hmm. It was a beautiful evening, so we decided to walk a few blocks over to where my parents were staying at a bed and breakfast called Walden on the Pond. And this gave us a chance to explore more of Spring Lake. They have a nice porch too. I think they're in the cottage. My parents decided to stay at Walden on the Pond because it is dog friendly. So they were able to bring their two small dogs to stay with them. And we took the dogs for a walk just as the sun was going down and it was just such a beautiful night. We were hoping that the weather was going to hold out for the next day because the wedding and all of our pictures were going to be done outside. After visiting with my parents, we walked back to our hotel because we had a couple things that we needed to do before the wedding. Since all of this had been planned rather last minute, 
there were a few little details that we had to take care of. Originally, I wasn't going to have any flowers. I was trying to keep things as simple as possible. But on my way home from work that afternoon, I stopped at the store and I saw this bouquet of pink peonies, which are my favorite flower. And they're usually very hard to find, but there they were. So I figured, all right, I'm going to have a bouquet. So I grabbed the peonies and some smaller blue flowers and I took them with me and figured, well, I'll put them together into some sort of a bouquet. So after I organized them and trimmed them, Patrick held them together so that I could wrap some twine and tie it together with some ribbon so I would have an official bridal bouquet. It feels like this is something on Braveheart. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I'm so glad I stopped at the store on my way home and found these flowers. They were the perfect last minute addition to our last minute elopement ceremony. We spent the rest of the evening relaxing in our giant hotel room, watching The Office and eating Dunkaroos. I did some last minute alterations on the dress and started getting my hair ready. Overall, we were excited that everything had come together and it felt like a plan that was perfect for us. We were going to have our family there in our small elopement ceremony in the park. We went to bed early to make sure that we were ready for all of the things that go into a busy wedding day the next morning. Justice, the next president to be the news and watch hear your career. It's time for you to face those fears, and it's all fair to be aware and I'll be there. So don't be scared. Just take a deep breath of air. And one, two, three to ten. You begin to focus again. And though time flies, we'll have enough to realize. Bigger than the both of us.